Good morning, everybody. Happy Lord's Day today. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We are so grateful you are joining us today, whether you're part of our church family here at Eau Claire Baptist or whether you are a guest joining, on, joining us online today. We are so grateful to have you present with us. And as we enter into the presence of the Lord on this beautiful Lord's Day, I remind you today that we have a God who invites us into his presence, who invites us to worship him. And so as we focus today on a message of hope, a message of God's hope, we pray today that you will find hope in the Lord and in the Lord alone. So welcome this morning. We are glad you're here. I'm excited to have a few special guests join us for the service this morning, and I'll be introducing them in just a little bit. Um, but for right now, uh, we do have a few folks who've gathered with us and, gonna, and are going to help us sing this first hymn, It Is Well. We'll have the words on the screen for you, so we invite you where you are to gather together with us in spirit, and let's sing this beautiful hymn together, It Is Well. So good morning, and would you stand for those present? Others, feel free to sing with us today.
everybody for singing and joining us today as we worship the Lord together. I am honored today to welcome a special guest with us, uh, Reverend Kelly Strom. And Kelly has come to read scripture for us and to lead us in a time of prayer today. Following Kelly, we are blessed today with some special music, which will be Malachi and Cammie. So we are excited to worship the Lord together. And uh, Kelly, you come and join us. Thank you so much for leading us in scripture and prayer today. Thank you so much, Stephen. I'm going to be reading today uh, Psalm 84. I think that it will resonate with your soul as it has mine. Would you join me in reading? How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty! Our souls yearn, even faint, for the courts of the Lord. Our hearts and our flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar, O Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, O Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, O God of Jacob. Look upon our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed ones. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. We would rather be doorkeepers in the house of our God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does God withhold from those whose walk is blameless. O oh Lord Almighty, blessed are the ones who trust in you. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, you are indeed our dwelling place, our resting place, our hiding place. Oh, how we long to be back in the sanctuary together. And God, yet we know that you dwell with each of us where we are, those who are listening now and those who will be listening later. We thank you, God, for the majesty and the power that you give each of us in your dwelling that we can go through anything. And Lord God, right now we pause to pray for our world. We pray for our country, our state, our communities, our neighborhoods, our homes. Each of us, God, we long for you. Our hope is in you. This pandemic has caused us all to stop and be still and to just recognize all that we have to be grateful for. And to stand with those who are suffering across the world and in our own communities. God, we lift up a prayer for all of those who are struggling with this virus today and all of those loved ones who stand by them in this struggle 
for those who've lost loved ones and have to live through this grief. May they feel the prayers of your church this day and every day. God, we thank you so much for the prayers here of Eau Claire Baptist Church that have brought Miss Bobby home this week, the prayers that have bought, brought Richard home this week, how we all celebrate them being home. We pray for the many who are still in the hospitals and the many who are struggling and looking for hope that they may find hope in you. Thank you that we have this church body that we can lean on, that we can find rest in, and we just ask that when the time comes that we can be together again, that we will just give you glory for all that you've done to keep us safe and healthy, to keep us united during this time. Thank you that you and you alone are our dwelling place. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, Kelly. I want to introduce Cammie and Malachi, and they're going to come lead us in song today. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones do him me love, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Yay! Thank you so much, Kami and Malachi. Great job. Thank you. We thank God for you both. Uh, thank you for leading us in worship today. Thank you, Kelly, for the beautiful scripture reading and beautiful prayer. I want to invite you to join me for a few minutes as we talk about hope. In the scripture, in uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, if you have a Bible, I'd invite you to turn there with me. Uh, for Paul writes in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us, and given us eternal comfort and good hope by grace. Verse 17, comfort and strengthen your hearts in every good work and wor word. I want to talk to you today about the differences between unintentional hope versus intentional hope. Let me illustrate it this way. Here's kind of what I picture unintentional hope looking like. Friday afternoon, I was driving over to Lexington to pick up our van that's been in the repair shop. And as I was driving almost into Lexington, on the other side of the road, coming towards my direction was this gentleman that, um, I don't know, I estimate he's probably in his early 60s and Sir, if you're by chance watching today, please forgive me, but I saw this gentleman in a convertible, in a red sports car convertible. And I mean, he looked to be rolling good. 
And so in his convertible were about five different pieces of this shower backing board, you know, that you would put behind a tile shower. And if I could try to illustrate this for you, there were about five pieces in his convertible and about three were in this direction, uh, leaning towards the driver. And about the other three were in this direction, leaning on the passenger side. And that shower backing board was just weaving in his open convertible top. And it was almost as if it was slow motion as his car was approaching the direction, coming towards me on his side of the road, of course. And in my rearview mirror as he passed, I saw about three pieces of that shower beating board break off and fly right out of his convertible. That reminds me of unintentional hope. And we know people like that, don't we? we? We know people that are just driving through, trying to cruise through life any way they can, just hoping that it somehow all stays together. Well, compare that to intentional hope. Like Paul says, the Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and gave us a good hope. I'd like to illustrate intentional hope is a very focused effort, kind of like a good friend of mine yesterday who helped me with some electrical work in our house. And uh, we worked about three hours trying to find the source of the problem. We were very intentional. We were climbing up in the hot attic, looking and trying to trace all the electrical wiring to find the source of the problem. We didn't give up until about three and a half hours later, and you guess it, probably we found the problem right there in the breaker box where we should have started three and a half hours before. But we didn't give up. And I want to encourage you today to have intentional hope. You know, unintentional hope kind of looks like this. It is empty. Unintentional hope is, is a false hope that runs out of answers, that wonders what's next. Unintentional hope has that ever wandering feeling of where can I turn? You know, maybe you felt that feeling some over the past several weeks. Where can I turn? What's going to happen next? I don't have any answers. The opposite of that, though, is so beautiful because the intentional hope that we've read about today in the book of 2 Thessalonians reminds us that intentional hope isn't empty. Rather, intentional hope is overflowing. It is full, like the 159 verses in Scripture that speak about hope. Do you realize that if we took just one verse per day to uh, read about hope and memorize and pray through that verse, do you realize that would take us from now all the way until October 29th? 159 verses of hope. Scripture is full of of examples of hope and full of reasons why we should hope. Unintentional hope, however, is really hope in whatever. Whatever seems to work, like the dear gentleman in the convertible, just whatever seems to work. It's like grasping at straws. You know, Ephesians 4 verse 14 phrases it this way, We are no longer to be tossed here or there by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine. Maybe you know what that's like to have unintentional hope that just tosses you here or there. The opposite of that, however... The intentional hope is not a hope in whatever. It is a hope in a person. Look at that verse again with me, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 16. Paul is very clear to say, Now may the hope of our Lord Jesus Christ himself. 
Intentional hope is not hope in a thing or not hope in circumstances or not hope in whatever. But intentional hope is hope in a person. Listen again to how Paul phrases that. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 16. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself. You see, intentional hope says that that he, the Lord, is going to do this. Intentional hope says that he, the Lord, is going to establish you in great hope. Intentional hope says he, the Lord, is going to secure your foundation. Intentional hope is hope that says he, the Lord, is going to get you through this. It's kind of like that number one song on contemporary Christian radio that maybe you've heard by Michael W. Smith that says, He is a way maker. And I want you to know today that our God is a God of hope and He is a way maker. You know, unintentional hope is a hope that is found in love that fails. You've seen that kind of love as I've seen that kind of love. It, it's love that doesn't last, but Paul reminds us that intentional hope rather is a hope that is found in love that is secure. If you look at verse 16 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 again, it's the Lord Jesus Christ Himself and God our Father who loved us. It is an everlasting, secure love. Here's what I want you to know today. Uh, intentional hope is so good that intentional hope, this verse tells us, will do some great things for us. And this just happens to be things that we need very deeply in our lives. You see, unlike unintentional hope that just wanders about and hopes in whatever, intentional hope gives us eternal comfort. In in fact, Paul says it this way, God our Father who loved us and He gave us comfort and a good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts, Paul says. Isn't that what, what intentional hope does for us. It gives us a deep-seated comfort in our hearts and in our lives. You know, a lot of folks need that kind of comfort today. In fact, this morning on the New York Times cover are the names of some of the nearly 100,000 Americans who have succumbed to the coronavirus. Others who have faced very hopeful, dire situations need a deep hope of comfort. Can I encourage you today to know that our God offers that to you, to me, right where we are. Intentional hope will give you deep, eternal comfort, that comfort in your heart. Intentional hope also gives you a good hope. It is a good hope that is a true hope. It is a very real hope. It's not a false hope. It's not a false assurance. It's not a hope that doesn't last. But the intentional hope that God gives us is exactly what Paul says. It is a good hope. It is a true hope. It is a hope that will last. I want you to know today that that hope is available and when you trust in the hope that God gives, it will not only give you eternal comfort and not only give you a true good hope, but the hope God gives is hope that will establish your life, that will root your life, that will ground your life, that will solidify your life. Can I invite you today to trust in this hope, to trust in this intentional hope. 
Please don't be one who just wanders through life, wondering aimlessly, wondering what's next, wondering how to find hope. Life was never meant to be lived that way. And in fact, that is why Jesus Christ came to give you and to give me an intentional hope. Well, how can you have this intentional hope today? If you look in your Bible back a few verses earlier in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 14, Paul is also writing and he writes, Stand firm. How you can have this hope today is to be determined in your heart and in your life that I am going to have intentional hope. If you watched last week, you remember we talked about the psalmist who struggled. And we said last week that hope really is an internal struggle. We struggle. We wonder sometimes. We ask ourselves, why do I feel this way? Hope does not come easy. But the scripture tells us that when we are determined to have this intentional hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, scripture tells us that to do that, we can stand firm. How else can you have that intentional hope today? Not only by standing firm, but by placing your hope in an intentional person. You remember what Paul said in verse 16 that we read together? The Lord Jesus Christ Himself, He will establish you in hope. Can I invite you today as we close the service, if you need that kind of hope in your life, if you need that deep comfort in your life, I invite you to do what Paul says to do in verse 14. Stand firm. Say, God, I'm going to trust you no matter what. God, I'm going to lean on you no matter what. God, I'm going to give you my heart and my life no matter what. If you'd like to have that hope today and you have never been intentional about inviting Christ into your life, I'd like to close with a prayer. And I see that comment from you, Destiny, that God really is powerful. You're absolutely right. And congratulations to you graduating very soon. We're going to honor you when we are back in church together. Can I invite you as we close the service today to bow with me as we pray? And to simply say something like this, Dear Lord Jesus, I am a sinner who needs your hope. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Forgive me for for wanderlessly aiming through life. Lord, I invite you into my life to be my Savior and to be my Lord. I look to you for hope. And I pray this in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer today, please let us know. Please reach out, comment here, and I'll reach out to you via Facebook. Uh, We want you to know that we serve a God of great hope today. On this Memorial Day weekend, we thank God for those who have sacrificed in service so that we can have great freedom And in the same way today, we thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ who sacrificed His life for us, who died, who was buried, and who rose again on the third day to bring us great hope. Thank you so much for joining us today. I invite you to listen as Fred plays a postlude for us. And I thank you so much for watching with us. We stand with you in great hope.
today. May the God of all hope fill you with his comfort. May he establish and root your life. Be blessed. Trust the Lord Jesus. Thanks for worshiping us with us today. Have a blessed day.